India wants you to hug some cows on Valentine's Day. Don't hug people. Hug some cows. It's cow hug day. India wants you to hug a cow on Valentine's Day. New Jersey has banned children from one particular restaurant. Nope. India wants you to hug a cow on Valentine's Day. India has labeled Valentine's Day cow hug day. India wants you to hug a cow on Valentine's Day. A New Jersey restaurant bans children under 10 years old. And the first infant in Kentucky was dropped off anonymously inside the baby box. These are the weird stories for Monday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast in the universe. That's right. I'm your host, Jonesy. I got three weird news stories like I always do. Let's jump right in, guys. Get your weird news fix. (laughs) In Kentucky, the first infant was surrendered anonymously at the baby box. Oh, let's learn a little bit about the baby box. Kentucky has seen its first infant anonymously dropped off at one of its baby box safe surrender locations. Safe Haven Baby Boxes founder and CEO Monica Kelsey said the child was dropped off within the last seven days at a bowling green (laughs) within the last seven days. You you might want to get more specific, Monica. (laughs) I mean, that that makes me wonder, was the child sitting in the box for four days before you... (laughs) Before you grabbed it? <laughs> yeah, the, the child was dropped off at some point in the beginning of February in our baby box. Um, I guess we're pretty lucky it was alive when we finally made it over there to pick it up. <laughs> hey, get specific, Monica. Okay, so she said the child was dropped off within the last seven days at the Bowling Green Fire Department location. She declined to be more specific to protect anonymity. She said the fire department staff was able to tend to the child in less than 90 seconds. Oh, okay, so now we're getting the info. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear that someone was there within two minutes to grab the child and take it out of a box. Because I'd imagine if you're an infant and you were put in a box, you're probably going to need some therapy if you were left in that box a little too long. This sounds like a therapeutic recipe here. But the fire department steps in, grabs the baby in 90 seconds, and now the baby's hanging out with, you know, handsome fire engine people. Yeah, those you know the the handsome fire engine people. Sometimes they're on calendars. They all have six packs and eight packs because all day long they just work on their six packs and eight packs at the fire station. When they're not fighting fires, they're just doing crunches. I think that's what firefighters do in general. Well, now they can take care of babies. That's that's nice to know. When they they have downtime, they can just raise the babies. Do the fire people raise the babies? Let's find out some more information. Uh, this child that was dropped off in the box is the twenty fourth in the country total to be surrendered at one of the more than 130 baby boxes and baby draws the organization has established across nine total states did you guys know about the baby boxes and the baby draws i really was unaware i thought you put it in a kayak and push it into the river and just see where it ends up you know maybe you hope that it lands on the shores of some you know couple that would like a baby and raise it yeah, they, they're, it's like a beach community finds it. I thought that's what you did, right? You put it in a basket and drop, push it down the stream, right? Isn't that what? <laughs> isn't that what you do? <laughs> jokes, guys. Jokes. It's a baby box. It's. <laughs> I can't even believe we're doing a story about a baby box right now. I mean, I can't even believe this world I live in. There's a baby box. You drop a baby in a box. <laughs> I just had a baby. I really don't want it. Oh, what, what do you do with it? Uh, there's a box down the street. Oh, okay. Is it like the same box you drop your clothes off in? Uh, similar, similar. Do I get a write-off for this? Is this a tax write-off if I drop my baby off in a box? Do they give me a receipt? I have so many questions about the baby box, guys. Oh, man, I got I got to get details about the baby box, man. Is there is there a slide and you, they land in a, on a soft pillow? Or like is there a ball pit at the bottom? That would be a pretty good experience to slide into the ball pit. but But not a good experience to realize you were dropped into a box by your parents. That's got to be a tough thing to uh, come to terms with later in life. You were left in a box. It's better than a dumpster, you know. <laughs> I have a friend who came from China. She claims that her her parents d- dropped her in a dumpster. I don't know if it's true, but she says they do that over there. So I guess it's better than a dumpster. Now, we have, a, I guess, an update on the status of the baby. They say the baby's healthy. That's very good. The baby's beautiful. The baby's perfect. They say the baby's perfect. Well, not that perfect. 
someone dropped it in a box. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Uh, Kelsey said that officials are now looking to place the child in a forever home. Ooh, a forever home. That sounds like a nice place. I want a forever home. I'm tired of living in this forever apartment. Can I get a home, please? We have a governor here. I guess it's the governor of Kentucky, Andy. Andy signed a law in 2021 that allows the use of baby boxes for children less than 30 days old. Oh, no. If it's over 30 days, what do you do then? Can't put it in the baby box. Do you just drop it outside the the doorstep of a church or a uh, YWCA at that point? What do you do with that? The law requires the boxes to be located at police stations or fire stations or hospitals. That's a good idea. They are staffed 24 hours a day. That's wonderful. It requires equipping them with a notification system to alert the first responders on site that a child has been placed inside the box. Yeah, so the fire department has two alarms that go off. One is like, wee, 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 there's a fire, there's a fire. And then they got to slide down the pole and then get in the trucks. And then the other one is just like, ding, 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 ding. A baby's been dropped in the box and they slide down the pole and grab the baby. So they're sliding down poles all the time, I, I imagine. Now, in case you're wondering uh, how many baby boxes there are in Kentucky, there's 16. And the Bowling Green box has been in operation for less than two months. Safe Haven baby boxes are installed in the exterior wall of a fire station or a hospital. An exterior door automatically locks when a newborn is placed inside. That's good because you don't want someone to come over and steal the baby before the fire people can get it. An An interior door lets the medical staff member secure the baby from inside the building. Uh, Here's a quote from... Safe Haven Baby Box. The child was legally, safely, anonymously, and lovingly placed inside this Safe Haven Baby Box. And that speaks volumes, volumes about the parent. That's just wonderful parenting. (laughs) Wow, we live in a world now where people glorify someone having a baby and then dropping it in a box (laughs) and walking away. (laughs) Walking away, leaving the baby out of your life you left it in a box people are glorifying this behavior that's the kind of world i live in ah it it befuddles me i'm not gonna lie guys i'm befuddled but this is the world we live in we have to embrace such things as baby boxes i, I should write the baby box jingle if you can't afford a baby just put it in the baby box you can't afford your baby just drop it in the baby box baby box yay A restaurant is banning children under 10 years old. Let's find out why. An upscale New Jersey restaurant has adopted a very controversial new policy that may strike some people as very heartless. Some other people as just plain common sense. No children under 10 allowed in the dining room. The name of this restaurant is Nettie's House of Spaghetti. Oh, Nettie's House of Spaghetti. I like it. I like how Nettie rhymes with spaghetti. See what they did there? Very, very brilliant. I don't know who Nettie is, but sounds like she's got some dope-ass spaghetti. I would like to try your spaghetti, Nettie. As an Italian boy, I'm down for your spaghetti, Nettie, and I like your silly name. It doesn't sound like an upscale restaurant, I'm going to be honest with you. Nettie's House of Spaghetti sounds like a kind of like a divey place with those uh, red checkered Italian restaurant um, tablecloths. You know the ones? Nettie's House of Spaghetti is located in Tinton Falls, New Jersey. Nettie's House of Spaghetti announced on Facebook that they have banned young children and they've acknowledged that this is likely to upset some of their patrons, but they said that they need to, quote, take control of the situation at Nettie's House of Spaghetti. Well, what's the situation? What were children doing over there? They're not respecting Nettie's House of Spaghetti. They're not respecting the spaghetti. They're not respecting the gravy. They're getting the gravy all over the place. You call it sauce, we call it gravy at Nettie's House of Spaghetti. Here's a quote from the restaurant on their Facebook page. We love kids. We love them. We really, we truly do. We love to feed them spaghetti. We've been feeding kids spaghetti forever. Ever since Nettie's House of Spaghetti was invented, we've been feeding them spaghetti. We've been stuffing kids' faces with spaghetti, making them fat and plump. We've been getting gravy all over their faces for many decades. We love it. We love the kids. We love to see their faces full of sausage and Nettie's Spaghetti. And linguine, you know, do you guys do a do good brujol? They always ask us, do you could do a good brujol over there at Nettie's house of spaghetti? Yeah, we do a brujol. The kids don't really eat the brujol, though, you know. You got to have taste for brujol. Anyways, lately, lately, it's been extremely challenging to accommodate children at Nettie's. That's all we're saying. It's been extremely difficult. Uh, we've had some high noise levels from the kids. They make a lot of noise, these kids. 
You know, when their face isn't stuffed with garlic bread, you know what they're doing? They're screaming. They're yelling stuff out. They're singing. It's crazy shit. By the way, there's insufficient space for high chairs at Nettie's House of Spaghetti. So we can't accommodate all these high chairs. Also, the servers have been cleaning up, quote, crazy messes. A lot of crazy messes. You know, I'm, I'm talking stuff is thrown everywhere. You know, they're throwing spaghetti off the wall. They're throwing Nettie's spaghetti off the walls. Why would you treat Nettie's spaghetti like that, throwing it off the wall to see if it sticks? What's wrong with you? Garlic bread crumbs on the ground. My goodness. Oh! And the pizza. The pizza. All right. These are just some of the reasons that they're instituting the ban on children. It takes effect in March when the restaurant reopens after winter break. They say that children running around the restaurant has also created a legal liability They've had to put a ban on children because they run around. And this puts servers that are carrying trays of food, trays of drinks at risk, trays of Nettie's spaghetti at risk, big bowls of Parmesan, freshly grated, puts them at risk, as you can imagine, kids running around. I want to know where the parents are. Nettie's added that the decision was not made lightly, but some recent events have pushed them to implement the new policy. It did not specify how they will enforce the policy. Well, that's easy. You just get children bouncers. Yeah, they just bounce the children out of there. You check ID, you over 10, oh, you bounced out. That's how you do it. Just like when they kick them out of the club for being for being nine. Now, as you can imagine, the announcement drew an outpouring of reactions on social media. People are always butthurt. People can't wait to get outraged. Someone wrote, I think it's a good policy. And for the record, I have children grown now, and I still agree with this. Someone wrote, not all restaurants are fit for a family atmosphere. Other people felt rejected. Other people are up in arms. They wrote, this is really sad. I was looking forward to trying out your place, but with with a well-behaved nine-year-old, I guess I'm not welcome. <laughs> with a well-behaved nine-year-old. Someone else wrote, this is highly disappointing. I've taken, I've taken my child to two to three Michelin star restaurants who accommodate her since she was an infant, but I can no longer bring her to a pasta house in the suburbs. This is lame, very lame. I'm going to tell you right now, the kind of parent that would sit down and write a long comment like this or a review... You don't want at your restaurant with their nine year old anyways, so I think you're in I think you're safe, Nettie. I think you're okay. <laughs> you sussed them out. <laughs> I don't know. This is the thing. Well, you know, it's not the kids' fault, it's the parents, man. This is the problem. It's if parents would just do their jobs, you wouldn't have this situation, man. But parents can't control them. I've seen it so many times at restaurants. On planes. For whatever reason, parents just don't want to tell their kids no. You know, they don't want to punish them. They feel bad. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was hit as a kid. Those days are over, man. <laughs> Those days are over. Man, you put him on a timeout, you stick him in a corner. What's that do? I don't know. I don't think it's doing anything, man. But what do I know? I'm not a parent. I just see the, I just see the kind of like the final product of it, and they just don't seem like they're, they're behaved at all. They just When you let someone do whatever the hell they want since they're a puppy, they just do whatever they want all the time. They don't care who's around. It's, they throw netty spaghetti on the window. <laughs> they just don't give a damn. Uh, I'm going on way too long on this story. But, you know, I just love saying netty spaghetti. Let's put it in a song. Netty spaghetti. Oh, netty spaghetti. Oh, it's like a, that Michael Jackson song, Dirty Diana. Do you know the one? Yeah, I'm doing a song parody. Anyways, you know how I'm going to end this. You're, you're, you guys are parents. What, what do you think? You call the show. Tell me. Six four six four five zero twenty twelve. Is this restaurant out of line? Uh, is this wrong? You know, it's a private business; they can do what they want. But are they jerks for doing this? I mean, what's your opinion on this? You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, "I'd like to make a podcast." Too difficult? No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. India wants you to hug a cow on Valentine's Day. They said it's going to bring you some good luck. 
The Animal Welfare Board of India issued a notice appealing cow lovers to celebrate February 14th. That's Valentine's Day. That's tomorrow. They want you to celebrate it as Cow Hug Day. The Government Advisory Board said that hugging a cow will bring you something nice. What's it going to bring you? Something nice. What, fleas? No. Emotional richness, they say. If you hug a cow, it brings you emotional richness. Well, they are very soft. I like cows. They're soft. They smell like crapola, but they feel good. It's going to bring you something else, they say, hugging a cow. It's going to bring you individual and collective happiness as well. I had no idea. Hugging a cow would bring me individual and the collective. It'll bring everyone. In other words, if I hug a cow, not only am I happy, everybody's happy that I'm hugging a cow. So what they're saying is don't hug a person, I think, on Valentine's Day. Don't hug your wife. Don't hug your husband. Don't hug your mom. No, no, no. Hug a cow instead. Humans don't deserve our hugs. The cows do. I think that's what they're saying. Uh, they're criticizing the what they call dazzle of Western civilization here. The board in India says that Vedic traditions are almost on the verge of extinction because of the progress of Western culture over time. Oh my goodness, they're on the verge of extinction over there. I had no idea. And it's our fault in the West. I didn't know that. I feel terrible that I'm extinguishing your traditions. I had no idea I was doing that. I'll hug a cow if it keeps your traditions going. I got, I'm, I got no problem hugging a cow. I'll hug it. Whatever you tell me to hug, I'll hug it. I'll hug an armadillo. I'll hug a lemur. You know, I, you know here's what I won't hug, though. Uh, porcupine. That looks very unhuggable. You hug a porcupine, you could end up in the hospital. It looks like, to me. Um, not down with that. Here's a quote from the board in India. They say, In view of the immense benefit of the cow, hugging a cow will bring emotional richness. It will increase our individual and collective happiness, don't you know? Therefore, cow lovers celebrate February 14th as Cow Hug Day. Keep in mind the importance of mother cow and make life happy and full of positive energy. Wow, this is lovely. I don't know what mother cow is, but we should hug her. Now, the welfare board in India says the cow is the backbone of Indian culture and rural economy. And the cow represents cattle wealth and biodiversity. It is known as Kamdenu or Gautama because of its nourishing nature, like mother, the giver of all, providing riches to humanity. The board says the advisory was issued on the direction of the Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairying under Ministry of Fisheries, Animal Husbandry and Dairying. That's a lot there. Wow, man, they really got a cow fetish over there in India, don't they? I'm not, I'm, I'm not knocking them. You know, everybody's different. But they're really into the cows over there, man. They're going to be romancing them on Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow. Uh, I want to say, if anybody that I know is romancing a cow tomorrow, you're probably in, you're probably in a bad way, and you should, you should get some help. But if you're in India, ro- romance the cows tomorrow. Do it up, man. Don't stop at the hug, man. Give them a nice big kiss on the lips. Bring them some chocolates. I'm sure they would like some chocolates. You know, you could do a lot for them. Do they like flowers? Maybe. Try. Just see. You know, you don't know till you try. Maybe they'll eat the flowers. I, I don't know. Take a cow to dinner, maybe. I don't know how you do that, but maybe that's an option. I'm extremely hungover and I have bad ideas right now. You know, that's just the reality of, of what it is. I'm doing the best I can here. I'm... I'm reading a story about hugging cows on Valentine's Day. Where is my life going? Tell me. Please tell me. Save me if you can. Please save me. Yay! Hello, my loyal listeners. Thanks for spending some time with the Weird AF News podcast. I hope you had a lovely weekend. I hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl. I apologize for my low energy. I'm a little bit out of my mind right now. I was up all night. um, Literally all night. When they say that, you know. No, no, I'm not bragging. Just this is where it took me. Sometimes you have these nights. I don't me- remember much. Some drugs, some chemicals were passing through my body. I, re- I recall at one point smoking a hookah with a a, a girl named Beatrice. Uh, don't recall a lot, though. I played some pool. I lost some money on the game. I remember being at a bar in the bathroom with a friend. You know, it's just one of those great times that you have in life, guys. It's very good. But, and I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to miss this episode. Now, I know it's being released late. Please forgive me. Um, I thought, you know, I'm just going to give it the old try. You know, what do they say? Um, showing up is half the battle, right? Didn't G.I. Joe say that? 
Who said that? Was it Nikola Tesla, the guy with the coil? I don't know who said that. Someone did. If you guys know, please call the show. You can always email me too, information, or just tell me that I'm that I'm uh, really out of line. Uh, it's funnyjones at gmail.com. That's my PayPal too. Just as you could surprise me with a PayPal, I'll buy something to cure my hangover. Um, yeah. Uh, did you enjoy the Super Bowl? Did you expect this outcome? I thought the Eagles would win. Uh, I thought it was their game to lose, and I think some poor choices on the coaching end, the defensive side of the ball, uh, kind of robbed them of the game that I think they could have won um, had they made some other choices on 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 defense. Very strange to me that that happened. Uh, but you know they didn't make adjustments. That was crazy. Now now not to take anything away from Kansas City, but I think I thought Philly was the better team overall. Uh, happy for Pat Mahomes though, for sure, because this is a transcendent quarterback talent, um, a true leader and someone who, you know, he's playing through an injury clearly. And it was re-aggravated. Uh, this guy is just a, a, a pure winner and he's a once in a generational quarterback talent. I'm just very lucky to be watching him, um, to win. This is his second, but I think we'll see him win at least one more. And I'm, we're very lucky that, that we can witness this, you know, this is great. It's great high level football talent. I love it. I love it. Um, and I enjoyed that. So good for him. Uh, if you guys want to support the show, uh, leave a review. Yeah. Don't mention uh, um, this episode in the review, please. Yeah. I would rather we forget this one. <laughs> mention some of the other ones that have brought you joy. And uh, if you want to support the show in another way, you could join my Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com slash weird AF news. It's like buying me a coffee every month. Or uh, in this case, a hangover concoction. You know, sometimes you need a hangover concoction. You guys know what those are. I prefer a Bloody Mary. I don't know what your hangover concoction is. I would love to know, though. Share it with me. Do you have a special homemade thing that you do? Do you do like a little ginger lemon vodka? A little, you know, hair of the dog? You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you do? Share it with me. I am I would like to learn how to make this beverage. Make a YouTube video of you trying it, sipping it. Send that to me. I don't know. I don't know what any of you look like, Hartley. I've only met a few of you. So anyways, I love you. I'll I'll be better tomorrow. Trust me.